Oh my goodness. Who wants to hang out with crazy old Mad Zach and our sidekick Riley? Huh? Yeah. Riley's getting a haircut pretty soon. I gotta shave him. I was gonna open up with the track, but uh, my thing isn't cooperating. So Julie's in the hospital. Pull up my monitor, see if anybody's talking at me. Yeah, Julie's in the hospital. She'd been sick for a couple of days. And uh, she, um, we thought that it was, uh, we thought that it was um, just from her diabetes or whatever. But she ended up, here's the thing. We go into the hospital, okay? I had to almost carry her to the car. She, I had to dress her. Chris Lane, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. I'm just uh, telling a story here about what happened with Julie. She's in the hospital. They're going to do surgery on her. Her, uh, come to find out her gallbladder is, is acting up. So, Jacob, hey, good to see you, Jake. It's going around. I've been sick for about a week. Yeah, we don't know exactly what yet, but here's the thing, okay? This is this is huge, okay? I'm sitting on another big pile of money, okay? If any of you have been following my program, you'll understand the you'll you'll pick up on it. But the the thing is, we go to the hospital. It's urgent. We go to the emergency, okay? She's incoherent. She does. She can hardly speak. She's totally dehydrated. I can visually see when I dressed her, when she got up to walk across the room, I could visually see the weight loss. Okay? And, and she, so she's, she's sick. And I'm, my, I'm preoccupied with my, my angry uh, stance about the FDA with the high fructose corn syrup and how they've given us all diabetes. And here I'm watching her die of diabetes, literally, to me. So anyway, they, they, they get her in the bed, and the first thing they start doing is, I've got it written down, okay? I'm keeping a journal. Today, this is the thing. I'm giving you guys the secrets in the show here about the journal thing, how to make it stand up in court, okay? So we get to the, I get to the, uh, to the hospital at 10, at, uh, at 9.46, they moved her into a room, okay? 9.17, I take her to the hospital. 9.29, I'm there at urgent care. So, I told her I wanted to take her to the hospital to begin with. She wants to go to urgent care. So, I go to urgent care. Urgent care says they can't help her because of the dehydration. So, take her to the hospital, okay? 9.46, they move her to a room with a bed put her on a cardiac with the EKG machine. And then I write down a leader, a, a, a line, I'm a leader you, you can't see, blind with an attitude and a big screen TV. Yeah, you don't see me for what I am because people see what they think they see. So anyway, 1021, they have a billing discussion with a patient who's in a state of delirium. They ask for her ID and her insurance card. I give them to her. The insurance is Blue Cross Blue Shield. The best you can get. And it says right on in big fat letters, Magna. Okay? Magna's a $60 billion corporation. Worldwide. Maybe more than that. She's QC. 120 a year. And they're drilling her while she's, it's adult abuse, okay? Taking you to the bar, Jake, and getting you drunk and then asking you how much you'll charge me to help me for a few days on a job, okay? Taking advantage of your inebriated state to get you for pennies. So they start drilling her for this money while she can't, she's not in her control of her faculties to make financial decisions and transactions, approve purchases, I'm furious. So they go ahead, they get the money. $455 with a 20% discount. 
So they give me the receipt, okay, in my logbook. This is the receipt. $380.74 they charge her. It's got the date, doesn't have a time. I asked for more information. What'd you bill for, or whatever? All they give me was this. So incomplete paperwork to me. So then they do the, they go through and they get the rest of the tests they wanted to do because they were taking blood and stuff while this was going on. They still haven't gotten a urine sample. Okay, they're already billing for the job that they haven't even diagnosed yet. Then find out that her gallbladder needs surgery. Okay. The bill was instantly approved by the insurance company to automatically cover $1,900. So the 19 was already on the table, and they're beating her down for another 400 Okay, While she can't make a competent decision about even, if, even how she feels. She's so delirious, she can't even say whether she's cold or hot. Oh, I'm pissed. Yeah, they did EKG, and they did. They didn't do EKG. My wife is so dehydrated; she's going limp spells. Lancaster Hospital let her get out of bed and fall on the floor and said, "We'll get there when we can, and we'll bring a wheelchair." It took them like 20 minutes to come in, and I freaked out on them. They was not happy. See, that's where, right there. Okay, yeah, you're gonna freak out. Oh, I was freaking out. If they knew how I was, how, if they knew what was going on in my mind, they'd all been on their fucking toes and they'd had about six or eight guards nearby. Yeah, if they could see inside my mind. But my composure concealed the fact that I was about ready to rip somebody's throat out. See, and that's where you give up your power of the situation. Your control of owning the, the purse. Yeah, when you when you when you when you lose it, it's the key to winning the fight. Is to not let them don't let them see sweat. That's the key, and I'm I hope you've been watching the last couple of shows. Yeah, see, this is relative to what you just experienced. So my point is. The thing is, it's about her emergent health, the situation. But they made it about the money when they already had enough information just with the Magna, Blue Cross, 18, 19, boom, paid for already. They already had enough substance to, to not question her integrity. Okay? But they made it about the money, and they handled it first as a business transaction when she wasn't capable of being involved in a business transaction. It's adult abuse. It's a mental health issue. Taking advantage. This is what's going on in America all across the board. Okay? Dumping dope in the streets to drive down the property values, drive down the price they pay for labor for people because a drug addict will work for cheap. You know, all this politics. Okay, I just helped a lady get a, an A-plus on her sociology paper to get a bachelor's degree with the information that I've gathered since the Nielsen ratings thing fell in my lap. This was all part of it. Okay? They're going to kill me they will. Yeah, five, I got five years. I can't wait. I can't wait to see the face of the guy. I can't wait to laugh in his face while they kill me. Yeah, I'm going to piss everybody off just a little. I said on April 26th, two years ago, I'm going to light a fire in the hearts of all men. Yeah, you can hate me all you want. But in the end, when you learn the value of what I've given you, you'll give me your heart. Yeah, it's that serious. And I believe in it. Yeah. So, yeah. See, capitalists have weakened our government. And they've collectively 
weaken the people. Yeah, great grandma and grandpa and grandma and grandpa's knowledge, they had us discard all that and pick up what was fostered into our lives that made our lives easier. The things provided to us by corporate America and then convincing us to cherish the trash, the waste, by telling us how the stuff's going to be valuable someday. Oh, and if, you, if it's in the original box, oh, it's worth a lot of money. They made us value the trash in, as compensation for the fact that they were getting scolded about the waste issue in the landfills. Same thing, that's where the collector's cup idea came from. Because they were getting chastised for all the waste. And what they, corporate attorneys, that's why they have corporate attorneys, to figure out how to break the law, do what's not right. So they had corporate attorneys work on the paperwork to pass the bill to avoid the additional land mass increase by claiming they were collector's cups and that, that it was on the responsibility now of you and I for all that trash. And that's why they made us all corporations in the 90s where everybody was smoking dope and getting stupid. They passed all kinds of laws on us while we weren't paying attention. Instead of keeping a book. Yeah, I'm the only person that's trying to offer everybody exactly what they need and what they should have had, but was downplayed and removed from their attention span. Yeah, the preservation of the family heritage. Yeah. Okay. Today's kind of, let's get right into it. The Illuminati money, possibly, yeah. So let's get into it, okay? Let's start with right now. Let's pretend like right now is when you begin keeping your journal. You start off with a simple entry. Your name. Yeah, if found, return to. Because this is this is as important this is more important than your birth certificate. Equally important than your birth certificate. Okay. You ever go someplace and they ask you, hey, do you have a, a letter? Something with your address on it to prove you live here? Jake, I know you know this. They ask you, hey, you got you're gonna have to have you when you go to the food bank to get some assist get a free a bag of food because you could didn't have enough money that month. So you go to the food bank and they ask you for a letter proving you live there. You don't need a fucking letter. All you need is your log book. Yeah, right here. Woke up in Lancaster. 32 bucks in my pocket. In a swollen bunghole. You don't need a, an envelope with your name on it. You know? No. All you need is your log book. That's everything. You start off with the date. You put the date on there. You put a little detail about the weather. Okay? And you put what time you got up, what time you started your day. You keep track of these details because you're a high-performance piece of machinery. You're a weapon. And you want to know where you're malfunctioning so you can add a little extra oil in there so the bullet don't lodge in there. And next thing you know, you can't pull the trigger. That's... This, this is your, when Tesla died, this is what they seized, okay? You put a date on there. You put some details, what you had to eat, what time you got up, what time you left the house to go to work, okay? And then you don't make it a point to waste time, wasting time. A lot of, a lot of people will criticize you for keeping a book because it's not in their favor, okay? Listen real careful. Yeah. You make a little time, and you put some details on your book. You don't always have time, but what you do have are trigger words. It's called a trigger word. You write down a word that's directly relative to the thought you were thinking, what you had to write down. You write a few trigger words down there to bring your mind back around to what you were going to write about, the key details. The stuff you don't want to ever lose in the reiterating of what happened in your logbook. Okay? This holds up in court. If you have to sue somebody, your journal's all you need. You don't need an attorney. 
No. All you need the attorney for is to file the paperwork because he knows what to ask for. Because they won't just give you, you go down to the clerk's office and ask for such and such. Hey, can you give me a report relative to my child support or whatever? No. If you don't know the exact name of the report that you have to file, the petition, the order, the request, if you don't know the name, they're not going to fill in the blanks while you mouth a couple of words close to it. They're not going to give it to you. You have to go down there armed with your intel that you gathered while you were having your coffee, taking your personal inventory. Balls, wallet, and watch. Balls, wallet, and watch. I got it all. That's it. A personal inventory, details about the day, time, bit about the weather. Let's say you're doing a job, working on a house job. You contracted a job, Jake. And... uh Oh, well, Art of War, yeah, well, this is way more power. I'm glad you said that, Acacia. Great to see you, Acacia. This is way bigger deal than the Art of War, okay? What I'm sharing with you, yeah, way bigger deal. First, this. Then, the, the Art of War is a supplemental, okay? But here's the thing. Anybody, your, your journal can get blown out of the water. If it's inconsistent, don't just think you're going to write a couple of notes down with a date and a time on it. And then, you know, maybe a couple weeks later, add a couple. No, no. You gotta, it's got to be a routine. There's got to be a routine pattern. There's got to be a history that you've established of your record keeping, your bookkeeping. I'm giving you gold here. This is stuff that you can't pay people enough money to teach you. You're not going to go out into, into the world and find a class where they're going to share what I'm sharing with you. The last few shows here, any of my shows, you know, this show's not about me or how great of a guitar player I am. I suck playing a guitar, but it makes me feel great. You know, I suck compared to everybody else's opinion because I can't play, you know, a, a, somebody else's song. Yeah, that's like sleeping with somebody else's wife. Yeah, who will sleep with anybody. I don't want that. Yeah, I, what I do is special. And a lot of you guys in the group see it. And, 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 and you guys mean the world to me. Yeah. Are you measuring for drapes? No, I'm just going with the blinds. So... So the date, the time you got up, some details, a bit about the weather. Let's say, back to the, to the bit about the weather thing. Yeah, the bit about the weather detail, okay? It's an important detail, especially, you know, if they do a story about your life. Here's the thing, you keep in a logbook, your biography's already written, your autobiography. Yeah, it's all there. All the trigger words within the phrases while you go back. Back and review it. Your 100-page journal could end up being a 5,000-page novel. Yeah. So, the, the, the date, the time, the weather detail. You know, Paul Johnson mentioned a thing. This is a memory I have of some of the conversations I had with Paul when we were great, great friends and business partners and potheads. Yeah, and drunks. Yeah, building houses, knocking down big money. And he made a comment about, about uh, pouring concrete when it's too cold, you know, and who gets blamed and all that. Well, you got the detail that it's 28 degrees below zero the day they poured the concrete on a house that you're somehow responsible for the, for, for the erection of. Yeah, you got the detail in there recorded that they poured the concrete when it was 28 below zero. And that's your release of responsibility, an indication of who is responsible. Yeah, who to go after for the money. Yeah, and here's, the, here's another detail, okay? Social security numbers, running a business. Yeah, guys keeping a book, okay? Here's the thing about keeping a book and, and doing shady business. You got to know where to, how to hide your money. 
Yeah, they do it all the time. You go down to Key West, for instance. It's in my book, Escaping the Despondent Sea. This, all these, uh, is a very powerful, very, very, very valuable book. Yeah, the, my book alone could get me killed by multiple people. Michigan State Police, for one thing. Yeah, exposing the kids to drugs, setting everybody up for their little drug plan. So, restaurants will advertise all the time. Companies, companies, failing companies, which the majority of companies go out of business. Majority of businesses do fail. It's all part of the evolution and the, what you deal with in business. Yeah, you're not just going to have a successful business. You're going to have a business, and some money's going to go through your hands. You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to learn some things. You're going to have a few successes, and then you're going to end up going out of business and then starting over. doesn't necessarily make you a failure. Edison spent, I don't know, a thousand times trying to invent the light bulb. Yeah, never failed once, he said. It just took that many tries to get the product. Yeah, so these restaurants, for instance failing. They only make their money off of drinks, liquor, and soda, and french fries, deep fried food, or deep fried pickles, whatever the crap is everybody's interested in. Yeah, they're failing. So they advertise jobs to desperate people in desperate areas. And they gather their social security numbers. And for every social security number that you have, you can claim that you paid a certain amount of money. Some places it may vary, but the $500 you can claim that you paid a particular social security number without having to file the 1099, you see. So if you've got to hide $20,000, all you need is 40,000 social security numbers. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm giving you Hardcore things. Yeah. And here's the other thing. There's a book. You have to learn how to, in order to be, you know, here's the thing. In order to understand the con game, you have to, you have to understand it. Yeah. And understanding the con game can be had through journaling. Like I just shared with you with the social security number thing. Okay. Yeah. And you'll learn how to sweet talk people and things. So people, just like the art of war, just, you know, it's, it's anything. You can use it for good to save the world, or you can use it for evil to destroy the world. Yeah, God gave you that power. Yeah, within you. It's all up here in your mind. But you have to earn through so many tests in life and proving your spirit and proving your 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 altruism and your the divinity that's capable of being had within you, you be granted access to those secret powers type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So the journal can be it, be, it can be evil, it can be freaking divine. But you in order to to have a beautiful journal, you know, the thing is when you die, when your ship sinks. I'm, I'm basing all this, a lot of this on maritime history, you see, and, and the shipping business. Very valuable lessons to be learned about teamwork and family and survival and business, all from just the shipping business. It's a basic thing, and it's, it's a fun thing to examine because of the pirates and things. But you're, you're, you're a captain on a ship, yeah, and you have to be aware of everything going on. Because you don't want your ship to sink. Yeah. So you keep a journal. You keep a notebook. And you tell the stories of good things that happened, the bad things that happened, the time you almost died, you know, how you lost your leg, you know. And when you die, when your ship sinks, the guy you worked for that always paid you to haul stuff or go out and, you know, find places, go on expeditions, he's going to want to know what happened to you because you had a history, a relationship. He, there's there, that's part of your family. Yeah, he's gonna want to find your logbook. Yeah, when you die, your kids are gonna want to find it. You know, like that movie, uh, Bridges of Madison County type of thing. 
where the boy and the girl were going through mom's stuff and reading their old journals and stuff. You know, the Clint Eastwood movie. So you're, you're, you, you, you want to put some, you want to put your heart in there, little pieces about yourself. You know, it's, it's, it's not something that you share with anybody necessarily, but it could be valuable to bank. Yeah, when you want to prove, you know, we share ideas and show them your, they want to see your business history, your business plan. Well, I don't quite have a plan, but I do have a history of using my brain. And, and at a bank, it's a great time to show off your logbook. But it's not necessarily something you want people to see. You want to use it in public when you want a physical demonstration, you know, where you want people to see it because you're wielding you possible being a possible threat if they fuck with you. Yeah, don't think you're going to screw me out of money on this project type of thing. That's what this logbook says underneath my arm. Okay? It says you ain't fucking me. That's what it says. Okay? This is serious. It's your personal development. You're a, you're, you're a product of your own mad scientist. And this is your mad scientist lab with all the fancy glass and the chemicals and shit. Yeah. Is anybody listening? And two people out there. This is hardcore. So, there's a book. It's called... Uh, uh, it's, it's called uh, How to Write Persuasively. Um, a book I read in particular is about how to write, how to write uh, cover letters, proposals, and how to write persuasively or something. And it, I'll find the, the actual edition and I'll share it sometime when I can locate it. But uh, it's about how to write persuasively. You see, let's say you're a parent, Jake. And you got the kid issue in custody battle. We're getting beaten down for child support unfairly. And you should have 50% of the custody type of thing. God forbid. But your logbook, your journal, what's going on with the relationship? What happened? How the kid got the bruise on his back? Things like that. You know, how the how long you you know how long your heart ached because of, you know, something she said or something. Little pieces of you that are that are heartfelt and, and, and uh, uh, self-effacing, that earn the support of the reader. Yeah, they earn, they, they, you win them over through the heartfelt things that they can s clearly see, you see. And, you know, like, we you know how a lot of these people all come whining and crying, begging for a dime bag or something. And they give you a big sob story. Yeah. And then you finally go, you know, tell them, oh, there's a couple of roaches out in the ashtray in my car you can have. You know, and you get rid of them. Yeah. Well, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. So you notice how I use the drug thing and, and all the other average, common, everyday masses information to break stuff down? I'd be a great president. Great communicator. Yeah, maybe I should take over Fauci's job. Get a few guys who actually have paperwork under me. So I could tell them what to do with their education. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. So anyway, Paul thinks I have delusions of grandeur. Yeah. Yeah, he makes comments about that often. Yeah, at least two that I can recall. That's often enough to recognize support when you see it. Yeah, but what Paul doesn't know is, is that I thrive on, on people telling me what I am and what I am not. I do. I love it when somebody tells me I can't do something. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love it. Yeah, you can't play the guitar, Zach. Yeah. Sometimes that's why I do it. Yeah, because people say that. Yeah, it makes me want to do it more. Yeah. Kind of like that don't do, just say no program with Nancy Reagan at the height of the police operation dumping all the dope in the streets. Yeah, see, they made a big mistake when they came to Hudsonville that year. Yeah. Big mistake. 
I was the one kid that got up and stood up and actually questioned their authority. Yeah, 1978 or nine, I was eight or nine. Yeah, you know, it was not long after telling my dad I was gonna kill him. Yeah. Seven year old just don't say that. I'm gonna stab you in your heart with a butter knife while you're sleeping. That's what I told him. He didn't sleep for two weeks. No, he didn't. What do you think, Riley? Should we try and play a song? Hmm? See if the guitar's in tune. Let's see if the guitar's in tune. <laughs> Sounds close. <coughs> we got out there. like to play. Yeah, I love it. I love it. No high in the world. No high in the world like finding yourself and being able to play a little bit of music. Yeah. It's like a drug, man. Anytime I'm feeling anything. No energy. I pick up that guitar and play a little something. Next thing you know, my heart rate's at uh, how high is it right now? 93. Yep, 93. Do you think the birds made your wife sick? That's a good question, Jamie. I, uh, I, um, I looked it up, actually, and there's like 60 different illnesses that people can get from, from uh, the dust from pigeon waste. But uh, for one thing, I was well aware of the hazardous potential of what I was dealing with before I brought it into my life. Yeah, I am a scientist. Yeah, I was very well aware of what I was bringing into my life. And uh, I, when I handle my birds, I have them very well contained as they are in the house. Uh, but for when they come out, they don't, they're not out, they don't have that many, that much our time out of the pen. It's not that frequent. So the dust that accumulates from the birds is con completely contained within the pen. There's no, there's one open area on one end for fresh air, and then everything else is closed off with heavy, like uh, furniture material, furniture rugs type of thing, or mechanics uh, blankets, uh, like uh, insulated sheets um, that that contain them. So there's no, and 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 there's no, you know, I'm not in there every ten minutes. I go in there, I make it a point to go in there twice a day. And um, there's, so there's no traffic where pigeon waste is being trotted around the house. And when they do come out, 
I police them. I'm very, very, very meticulous about policing behind them. And uh, they get cleaned up afterwards. Um, I have lots of antibacterial stuff. I do have a medical background education and psychology education and, and all this other stuff. I'm not just some guy willy-nilly like everybody else. Okay, I'm Captain Mad Zach. Yeah, I don't talk about or do shit. I don't know anything about it without doing the proper research. No. So my wife is not sick from pigeon poop. Yes, let's get that straight. But there, there is a thing. You know, when I am in there cleaning up, I do wear a, a, a bandana. And the key is to not make a bunch of dust. Yeah, when you're sweeping, basic, basic thing that people should know when you're sweeping, you don't sweep like this and flick everything into the air. You sweep and you drag it gently into small piles. You don't sweep all the dirt from one side of the room all the way into a pile on the other side of the room. You section the area off and you do little four foot spots, four foot by four foot, and you sweep, you sweep a small pile, and and you go about it that way, and then you get the actual dust broom for dust, and you sweep with that. You don't sweep. You see somebody like you see on people on TV where people are pantomiming sweeping and they're like that. Well, that's all fine and dandy when you're outdoors and the wind is blowing the dirt away. But when you're indoors, it's about containing it. You know, no, having the knowledge to know how to contain it. You know, it's like when you hold your breath a little bit while you're playing with your cocaine. Yeah, you don't sit there breathing heavy when you're chopping up lines. You blow your dope all over. People actually do hold their breath while they're while they're dicing their coke up. Yeah, I'm no fucking idiot. I'm Captain Manzak. Yeah, I wouldn't profess myself as having the capability of even being close to Captain if I wasn't confident that I could do the job. Yeah, and the fact that I resolve to be Captain instead of the next guy up should be easily recognized that I'm not power hungry. Yeah. I'm, I'm a minister. I'm ministering. Yeah. If I got to get down and dirty and speak ghetto to you to get you to hear what I'm saying, I can do that. I'd rather not. I don't speak ghetto. Yeah. It makes me stutter. Yeah. And I use the whole alphabet. I don't like people shortchanging words. Yeah. If you don't like the word, don't use it. It's about conduct. You are what you are through your conduct. Yeah. Guys don't get that. No. Now, now think they're a man, though. I'm passing out the man card. Yeah, that's what this is all about. I've showed you guys. This was a display to my kids, first and foremost. This whole evolution, last two years. Yeah, my spirit made me do it. It's embarrassing it's to watch myself when I was hammered and stupid and all this sound like everybody else. Yeah. Society sickens me. Nobody's had a fair chance. No. I'm trying to level the playing field with the stuff I'm sharing. Yeah, my demonstration. All of you guys have could see it right have seen it right before your eyes. Yeah. I mean I'm thankful. Yeah, my show, watching, watching the shows I've made, is very supportive to me. Yeah, studying my journal. It's a video edition of my journal. I'm, I cherish it. It's more valuable to me every, every day. I, I, I have more and more appreciation for it. I do. Sometimes I force myself to do the show, you know, when I don't want to. Carrier Pigeons Blues show I didn't want to do, you know, um, you know, the, the show I did uh, about uh, the extinction or something, I did not, you know, a lot of times, I don't just do the show, you know, it's, I don't know what's going on, I don't know what it means, but it's all part of something that's, that's going on, and the thing is, is something special is happening, something magical is happening, something, uh, it's been happening. But I'm doing something. There's something inside of me is 
making me walk towards. So there's something's going to happen. And the thing is, is without me becoming and doing what I'm doing and communicating to who I've been communicating to, without me doing what I'm doing, what's supposed to happen, what's going to happen, whatever he's been waiting, might not happen. See, I still haven't seen the blueprint, but I know I've been put to a task. And I made a comment yesterday or day before about, uh, you know, about how, you know, this show, first and foremost, is, is for my kids, you know, and myself. And uh, my friends, yeah, you're, you're, only your friends are going to be there for you tell you the truth, be honest with you, tell you you got a drinking problem, you know, or whatever. Only your friends are going are gonna to hurt your feelings with the truth. I'm brutally honest because you haven't noticed. Yeah, and the thing is, is I perform for my kids, for my friends, my fans, but for, for God, yeah. My, my biggest fan, I was dead six times. Killed myself six times. I'm here for a reason. I don't know what it is, but I know I earned the promises. Yeah, yeah, I know that much. I know I've been rewarded. I know I won. Now all I gotta do is hang on a little longer, continue doing what I've been doing. Yeah, all I got to do is keep doing what I'm doing. And I don't even, that's the funny part, is I don't even know what I'm doing. You know, I pick up the guitar, and uh, I don't, I, I, I only know, you know, real, I only play one scale, because my spirit wants me to focus on that scale. And uh, so far, a lot of magic has happened for the last two years coming out of that scale. There's a resonance in there. There's a certain hertz number that I'm hitting in there. There's there's magic there that I'm supposed to share. There's positivity there. There's some kind of like the Pied Piper thing. Yeah, the, it's been it's been happening. I I'm, I've been making the music that can change the world. I think. Yeah, I, little do I know. I might have already made the song, but maybe I'm the song. Maybe it's not any one of them. Maybe maybe it's me. I don't know. But going back to drinking isn't going to help, help anyone in the garden of life. You know. Yeah, it's not going to help anyone. Yeah, and besides that, I'm, I'm, I'm free of the pain that made me want to drink. I could have a drink if I wanted but I don't want to. I, I, I drank before. I've been through it. I know too much now. I know enough. I, I, know, I, I, I know way too much. I, I'm at the point that everybody wants to be at, but uh, I can barely handle knowing what I'm knowing. Yeah, and know the, the secrets that I have to keep. Yeah, and I dance around them all the time and, and, and share those very secrets. I'm, not supposed to share, yeah, but it's the secret of the way, yeah, because I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to share them, but not outright, you don't just get them, you know, you have to work for it, yeah, you have to fight it in the riddle, yeah, I'm in the riddle, yeah, I don't know what's going on, but something very special, it's been happening for two years, come on, for, uh, I was spoken to, I was told things that came true. Yeah. I was told they were going to come for me. And they did. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They just like I said. Yeah, they're going to come for you. People are going to come and they're going to take you away. But no harm will come to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was in that mental hospital, the psychiatric ward, where they labeled me schizophrenic. Yeah, 33 days I spent. Learned a lot there too. And coincidentally enough, it was a uh, 
It used to be a like a retirement home for the elderly clergy. Yeah, is what it was. It was like a little. It was a. It was a, a, a sanctuary for old nuns and 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 people in the clergy, and it was uh, originally belonged to the church, and it still had all the the miracles of life kind of pictures of nature all around, and things like that. And I knew what all the items were, and everybody was uh, all the. That's one of the places where where people were, you know, listening to me and hearing me and reading my writing and things and telling me that I'm a prophet. And, uh, you know, other than the chatter that I got wind of on Facebook that people were talking about me. But, and I don't know anything about any of that. I don't claim, I don't, no, I don't know about any of that. But I know that, uh, I know that um, I've become a minister. Yeah, that much I know. Yeah, and I, it's even in my Chinese zodiac. And it's funny because I'm not a religious person. And it's not about religion, it's just about the, you know, uh, when you wake up in the morning and, you know, your back hurts and you, you step in baby puke, you know you're awake. You know, you know it's not a dream. So you know when you know, yeah. You ever hear that? People say that? Oh, you you know when you know? Yeah, well, I know. Yeah. It's kind of bittersweet because it's like the most, ex the most wonderful thing. And it's also a terrible thing. Kind of like how, you know, it's, a, it's like watching people dying that you can't help. Yeah, you, you, you see it all around and, and there's nothing that you can do except for uh, continue to try and help the people around you as you can. Yeah, you know, we're all gardening in the garden of life to share the sustenance that comes from the garden. Yeah, and um, something very magical is happening. Yeah. Yeah, and this journal journaling issue ties right in with all the things that I learned since diving into the the uh, Nielsen's rating investigation. Yeah, yeah, it's all born out of the. I mean, I've been being educated all my life for this day, but uh, when the Nielsen rating thing landed in my lap twice. It opened up a whole big can of worms. And this is all part of it. Yeah, everything I've been talking about is all relative, keeping a journal. The dumbing down of society, you know. See, when I was a kid, they came into the schools and they basically sold the youth the partier lifestyle. You know, tailgate parties and all that. And you see, football didn't start. See, 1966 is a magic, magic number. Yeah, man, 1966. See, the Media Rating Council formed in 64. Yeah, or uh, right around 64. And they were getting their steam and gaining their uh, their monopoly. And I think that they were, they, they're involved, I believe, that they have something to do with Kennedy's assassination. I think Kennedy was going to fight him. Yeah, I think he was going to fight everybody. See, the Media Ratings Council is everybody. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, and I think that uh, Kennedy was going to fight them about what they were going to do with the media. Yeah, and all the programming and dumbing everybody down and, you know, shooting Martin Luther King and all that. Yeah, I'm on to something big. Paul thinks I have delusions of grandeur. I can't get him to crack a book. The thing is, is if you read the Fair Ratings Act of 2005, as I did, you'll see all the all the lies and all the questions that basically answer themselves right there before your eyes. Yeah, and if somebody like me doesn't step forward and start doing what I've been doing, something very nasty is about to happen. Yeah, yeah. And I think, one of my, uh, uh, 9.51 it is, March 22nd, I'm about to do a pitch right now for the United States Military Army Branch. Yeah, if you got any brands, 
you might want to consider in real enlisting in the army. Yeah, because in the near future, yeah, when all the dirty work's got to be done in America, yeah, you're not going to want to be entry level because you might pull a landfill duty, working at the landfill. Yeah, so I suggest en enlisting in the army right now. Yeah, getting your education and your training. Yeah, continue badgering some of these professors about what I've shared about the logbook. Yeah. Yeah, you see, when disaster hits, the army's going to be there. Yeah, yeah. Remember the good piece of government. Hopefully still there's still some good government going on that we can get control of. But here's the thing. We can't undermine it. We can't. We could take over the government. Yeah. If people keep a logbook. Yeah. You could take anybody down. If you keep a logbook. Yeah. You target somebody. You see. Everybody around you is keeping a logbook. <laughs> Every bill you pay. They keep a logbook. They keep a book. Yeah. Yeah. In order to play with the big boys. You gotta learn how to use the big boy tools. Yeah, and the big boy tool is real simple. Pad paper and a pen. And have sense enough to know what details to put on the paper. Yeah, you could take over people's company. You, you could, if you have a good enough logbook, you could freely kill a man. Yeah, easily. Yeah. I'm here to tell you. Yeah. So, you know, I've been keeping notes, but I can't be the only one, you see. Because when you have a, a, a hot potato like I have, the threat against me is that they'll, they'll lock me up in the, in the psychiatric ward again, which will be kind of hard to, to repeat that offensive because of all the documentation that I've been doing with my show. Yeah, and the fact that they know, you know the authorities have read my book. They call it a manifesto. But they know I'm keeping notes. So now they've got to be careful about their next move and stifling me and sh shutting me off. So they can routinely throw me to psych ward. And they can find some. See, one way of breaking somebody is to keep running them through the legal system until they're out of money. Yeah, you could do that. But you've got to keep a logbook and you've got to study them and find out where your room is. Yeah, where you can beat on them with your pen and your pen of paper. Yeah. And all you got to do is go through the log books of the others. Yeah, the bills they've been passing. You have to actually shut the TV off. Yeah, the football game, that's to keep you from wanting to read the bill. Who wants to read the bill when the football game's on and the cheerleader's shaking her tits? Yeah. So corporate America and, and has, has taken over a lot of aspects of our government that are involved in programming the media with the things they want in their attention span. Yeah, the cheerleaders. So you got all the cheerleaders out there and the dope keeping everybody occupied. Yeah, Breaking Bad, that was all part of the programming. I think everybody involved in that Breaking Bad program, advertisers, producers, everybody involved in it, writers, every one of them should be suspect and under investigation. Yeah, yeah. You know how they, you know, they can cut, they can bring up a charge against you, say, you, you know, what I'm doing. They could construe it as insinuating a riot, trying to insinuate a riot. Yeah, well, the same type of thing could be used against those people. Yeah, propagating drug use, glamorizing it, you know. I got into trouble with a... You know, when you, when, what they call me is a, a, you know, asshole. Yeah, they call you an asshole when you demand more out of people around you. So they come up, I had a dog, and they made me forfeit the dog. And then the people did something to the dog, and they wouldn't allow me to see it. And I got upset and said, I'm ready to start shooting. And so several hours later, because I'm so threatening, several hours later, Please show up in my house and start trying to push me around a little bit. And then they arrest me for aggravated menacing. Yeah, I'm menacing corporate America by empowering the little people with little knowledge about keeping a book. 
Yeah, Cherish, J uh, Jamie. You go and you buy a TV. You know how any, any of the stuff where they talk about free financing, two years free. So you go and you buy the thing, and it's two years free financing. Well, they, yeah, and they, own, they, and they approve everybody. Yeah, because they know you don't keep a book. So that $500 item you cost, you bought, is now 1500 or two grand when the two year financing, free financing runs up because they, they slap that whole two years of interest on the first bill, you see. Now your TV isn't 500, it's 15 or two grand. Yeah, because they know the 80-20 ratio, the 80% of the population don't keep records. That's how corporate America gets away with selling garbage all the time. You know, all everything you buy breaks. Yeah, even though it says guaranteed or warranty, because they know nobody's going to file the warranty card. Nobody's going to save the receipt. Nobody's going to keep a logbook, balance their checkbook, do the, wash their windows. Yeah, all that. Come on, I'm giving you guys gold. These are I'm giving you cannons with with the loads. Powder and balls. Yeah. This is serious. We're in a lot of trouble. Two people watching me run my trap. Anybody got anything to reciprocate? Are we taking notes? I hope so. Yeah. I'm not getting any money out of this. I don't have sponsors. This is my own time and effort and money and in reality, what I'm really doing with my life. Yeah. Yeah. And here's, a, here's another thing. Here's a give you another example of, you know, dumping dope in the streets and using the people as tools. In Key West, they've got a, a big homeless population. And just before any festival, which they have a festival every week, just a bunch of beggars begging for money. They have a festival to bring in a bunch of city slickers from up in the dry land. So they calm down, just before they get the people to calm down, they clean up the streets by picking up all the homeless people. Yeah, and then all the homeless people that they picked up before the last festival are still in jail. They send them out to do the island cleanup. You see. You know, when the festivals are over, they let them out, depending on the money, the target market. Like bikers, okay, they do the bike week thing. They don't do the bike week thing in, in Key West anymore. You know, because some bikers went down there and smashed some shit up. I don't know the whole story behind it, but Dennis Reeves Cooper might, from the Key West, the blue paper. I don't know what happened to him, but... He got run out of town. He was exposing the cops all the time. Yeah, their little program they did with me in Hudsonville back in 78, 78, 79, state police came in with a big suitcase full of dope and they showed it at all of us kids. And uh, they were talking about how, you know, how dangerous it was and stuff like that. I mean, this is a this is a exposer that they didn't have, you know the parents weren't told there was no permission slips signed and sent home or anything like that no this was a surprise thing mom and dad didn't know about and the cops came in and turned the kids all on to dope yeah it's kind of like when the babysitter lets your finger her. yeah kind of like that they came in and they molested the kids yeah and I stood up and I said you mean to tell me one little flick that that's gonna destroy my life. And he said, oh, yeah. And the other guy wrote my name down. Good. You shouldn't have trouble remembering that. So then we moved from Hudsonville. Moved to Coopersville. Yeah. 
where those teachers were not approving what the guidelines were to teach the kids. So they went out of their way to teach us some secrets about the no such thing as free thing and the free financing tip I gave you. Yeah, free interest for 24 months. Yeah, they told us about that stuff. The colors of the packaging and the mind control. Yeah, they told us a lot of that stuff. Said they'd lose their jobs if the school board found out. Yeah, yeah, and it's funny because CIA came in. Yeah, and they interrogated us children when we were nine, ten, mostly nine. And they said, if you were ever in trouble, where would you hide? Yeah, that's one of the questions they asked us, okay? They built a file on all of us kids and got all of our information. Everything they wanted to know or thought they could find out or needed to know. And they built a little file on us for the future. Yeah. So while you guys are talking about Meghan Markle socks and whose life matters and all that stuff, okay? Yeah, your life matters through your conduct, okay? And here's the thing. Yeah. Okay, as far as the system, the government, and the corruption, we're all nothing more than rats, okay? Rats matter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got good. You can have a good effect from rats. You can have a bad effect from rats. They matter, one extent to the other. There's a balance in there. They could be bad or they could be good, depending on your intention of their usefulness to you. Am I making sense to anybody? Yeah. So all these gangsters dealing dope and all that stuff and thinking they're getting one over on people and stuff like that. They're actually working for the corporations trying to destroy them. Okay? You can tell a lot about who the target market is. Remember back when I was a kid, some of the jokes that I heard, the racist jokes, was one of the words, and this is very, very very critical information, okay, about the targeting, who's the next victim, okay, keep reparations, reparations in mind, okay, they're about to give money out to people, the same money they want to take back, all right, there was two words in the joke talking about the shortest and longest word that that the, a black person would use, a black guy, you know. It was shit and motherfucker. Yeah, I remember very clearly. And now, on TV, is the spaghetti sauce commercial. Cooks like a mother. Yeah, well, uh, even the most devout Christian in the world knows that mother is short for motherfucker. Okay? So, it's a... Low key way of saying it. Mother. Cook like a mother. Cook like a mother. Cook like a mother. So they're using that language and that, that, that innuendo to win over the people they're molesting for their money. Con tactics. Yeah. When it's Irish Heritage Festival. When it's, you know, St. Paddy's Day, they sell green beer. Target the Irish. Yeah. And when, when it's St. Paddy's Day, everybody wants to, you know, wear green. Kiss me, I'm Irish. So everybody plays the game. Yeah. And they sell Irish stuff. When it's Mexican Heritage Month, they sell tacos. Carnitas. Yeah. You gotta pay attention to what's going on. See the symbolism in things. There's languages being spoken right before your eyes that you have no clue of. And you're worried about the guy speaking Spanish next to you, thinking maybe he'd be talking about you because he's not speaking English. You know, well, the world don't center around us. So just because somebody's speaking a different language doesn't mean they have any ill intentions. Maybe they're more comfortable that way. 
Maybe they're talking about, hey, you know, should I say hi to this person? I don't know how to react. You know, you don't, you don't know. People are always trying to have a better understanding. Yeah. In order to be fair to everybody, the first thing you have to do and instantly is offer somebody some understanding when you're not seeing eye to eye, when you don't agree. Yeah, you know, like Paul, tell me I'm delusion, you have delusions of grandeur. Well, I could just end that and block him. But what, what would Paul learn from it, see? Little does he know I'm the teacher. Yeah, and little does he realize he's teaching me too. Yeah, see, I become more altruistic. Yeah, more closer to, to the divinity with everything I'm learning. Yeah, because I'm trying to be good, positive. Viral in that effect. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody can be happy and find a little piece of some of the happiness that I've discovered through this two last two years of, of our journey together. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a very interesting journey. And I really miss A D. I wish I I wish I knew why she wasn't uh Sending me a message, sending me a care pigeon once in a while. I don't know what's going on with AD Justice. But she was, she's a very, one of my very dear, dear, dear friends and fans. And she's been, she was extremely supportive. And I get a lot of that, a lot of support when I look at this rose quartz bracelet that she gave me. Yeah, and I miss her. So anyway, what? You got to go to single party? All right. Well, I got to gather my stuff together and make some popcorn or something. Maybe unwind or something. Maybe watch a rerun from The Last Kingdom with Uhtred. Uhtred of Babenberg. Yeah. And then I got to go up. Julie gets her. I think she's going to. They're going to take her gallbladder out tomorrow. I don't know. They're going to dive into exploratory surgery tomorrow and try and figure out what to do is what's going to happen. And then we'll see. That's what's going to happen. I already know that. That, that much I understand. You know, there's an issue with the gallbladder. They've got to open her up and look at it. So it's going to be an explorative thing. They don't exactly know what they're doing. Uh -huh. yet. Yeah, I'll let you out in a minute. Hope everything goes well and have a good night. Chris Lane, same to you, Chris Lane. Everything is going to go well, because I say so. Yeah, I insist. Krug, great to see you. Great job on that cannon. Can't wait to fire that bitch. Yeah. Anyway, you guys at ease. Good night. Peace, love, and care. Be the change. Yeah, be the change. And thanks for being there, everybody. I'm finished.